So now in this video we're going to focus on current. Current is the moving charges through a circuit. It's very important. And ultimately, when it comes to resistors especially, you take the voltage that is across the resistor. So these are just resistors that we're going to put a voltage across. The meter doesn't uh, block any of the voltage. So the full 5 volts will go across the resistor and then the meter will measure the current going through it. So it will be 5 volts divided by the resistance will give us the current. So let's take a look at the values of the resistors we have here. And so they're all plugged to the positive rail on one side and then on the other side of the resistor they are to just blank rows. They're not connected to anything and uh, the power is off. You don't want to measure resistance while power is going through them but uh, they're not a, a complete circuit right now. They have one pin that is on a blank row. So there you can see 10 ohm resistor. So the reason why I'm using such a large resistor here, we're going to put 5 volts across it and we expect about 500 milliamps of current flowing through it. That's a lot more than a quarter watt resistor. That's mostly what I have, quarter watt uh, resistors. And so this is a 10 watt resistor. As you can see it has a whole lot more surface area and so it can dissipate about 20 times the heat of uh, one of these. Uh, actually uh, 40 times. This is a 100 ohm resistor right there. So it actually says 100 now. Sometimes it says like 99.8 and uh, this is a 1 kilo ohm. So that's 1. It's just a spec below 1. Technically it's 1. But you can see K and then the omega symbol. So that's for kilo ohms. Kilo ohm is thousands. A thousand times a single ohm. So that is 1 times a thousand so 1000 ohms right there. We will go to uh, this one and now you'll see 10 but again it's in kilo ohms so 10,000 ohms just the one yeah that's a hundred thousand ohms right there when I have a good connection 1 million ohms and 10 million ohms so we just keep multiplying by 10 working our way up so now let's also get a voltage reading. So I just turned the uh, meter off. So we set the probe to measure voltage. And measuring voltage, this is an auto range meter. All I have to do is set it to voltage. If you have one with different values, you want to set it to a value of voltage higher than what you can expect to measure. And uh, we don't have to worry about that because this is auto ranging. So there's zero volts right there and there may have been a little charge still on there from when I turned it off but uh, it's zero volts it looks like there was a tiny bit of charge but now we turn the power on across these two points we can see that we have five volts right there so again it's not a perfect five volts for whatever reason but we aren't real particular with the numbers generally whatever is really close to it is uh, good enough. So that was real close to 5 volts, so 5 volts is good enough. So now, we're going to actually get to current, and we're going to measure it. So, we don't just have to depend on the math, usually you just get the math thrown at you. To begin with, we're going to deal with the 5, uh, or 10 ohm resistor, and that should give us 500 milliamps of current, because it's a 5 volt power supply. We did see though, that it was actually an 11 ohm resistor and I think this is the resistor that I put too much current through and I overheated it before and so that may have been what threw off the resistance so when you're reusing components some of their properties may not match up because you abused them in the past but in any case we have the meter set to measure current in amps so now we also with this meter and probably every meter you have you have to take it out of the milliamp setting if not even more settings than that and put it into the 10 amp or less setting. So this doesn't quite auto range as much when it comes to measuring current but it's still a lot more auto ranging than other meters. So this is a 10 ohm resistor 5 volt power supply and we expect now we actually know the resistance is a little higher so we expect a little less than 0.5 amps and there you can see that right there and so since this is in the milliamp range so 0.5 amps is 500 milliamps it would actually be more accurate to set the meter to the milliamps but that makes the math easy 5 volts 
10 ohms, you get 1 tenth of 5 for the current, which is 0.5. That is in amps though. You can convert that to milliamps, which uh, the meter does for you. Oops. There we go. So milliamps of current. Again, we have the meter to the red probe. So this is pretty common to uh, still try to measure it. And we should probably get like some weird number or something on there. Yeah, 7.8 milliamps. I don't know why it's saying that. Uh, well, I, I know why, because it's not in the right, the probe's not in the right slot. Let's put it to milliamps. But I don't know why it was 7.8, uh, why that number popped up. So something went on within the meter. So now we can complete the circuit because remember current flows through an entire circuit. The current's the same. So when we get this measurement and uh, that's really low. I don't know why it's that low. But uh, when we get that measurement that's the current flowing through the resistor and through the meter. I hope I didn't uh, damage the meter at some point. Let's go to the 100 ohm resistor, see what we get. So, uh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, that's that's lower than it should be. So 100 ohm resistor, there you can see, it's pretty much uh, spot on 50 milliamps of current. So 10 times the resistance, one tenth the uh, current, if this was uh, behaving properly. Now we go to this one, and again, now it's five, so that's one tenth. Uh, five milliamps of current there it went down so now we got as far as these resistors go to the bottom of the milliamp range so let's go to this one so that's a 100 ohm resistor 1000 and as you can see here the 1000 ohm resistor it makes the math uh, pretty easy we have 5 volts divided by 1000 ohms that gives us one thousandths of the uh, current as voltage so 5 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.005, which is the same as 5 milliamps. So for each volt across a 1,000 ohm resistor, you'll get 1 milliamp of current. Makes the math easy. So once you get used to it. So now we went up 10 times the resistance. This is a 10 kilo ohm resistor, so it's 0 0.5 milliamps. So again, we came to that point where it's low on the meter, and this meter has a microamp range right there. So micro is one millionth, and that makes it easy to measure very low currents right there. So I think this is the only meter I have that goes down to uh, one microamp altogether, and then it's it actually goes down even further into nanoamps. So if that's at point one, that would be 100 nanoamps. But in any case. Let's get back to it. So, that must have been, yeah, that was the 10 kilo ohm resistor we measured. Let's complete the circuit through the meter. And there you can see 500 microamps now. Or you could say 0.5 milliamps. Generally, you'd probably stay in the milliamp range. For uh, 500 microamps, you'd say 0.5 milliamps. But uh, in any case, what matters is that you understand the numbers. So, this is a 100,000 ohm resistor and so we have 50 microamps now we come to the 1 million ohm resistor so again now it's a 1 million ohm resistor we have 5 volts so 5 volts divided by 1 million ohms is 5 microamps and it's a point what would it be a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 5, I believe amps and then you convert that to microamps and uh, there we go and then now, with a 10 million ohm resistor, we will get into the nano range. This meter, though, does not have a nano amp uh, setting. And I don't know how much you'd have to pay for one that does. But in uh, any case, there you can see, I don't know if that is just the meter. This is a very low value for this meter. So that's probably what it is. I'm, I'm guessing it probably is. Uh, about five microamps but I think when we measured this uh, 10 million ohm resistor it actually had a little more resistance so that would kind of explain it going down a little bit let's measure that resistance again we don't have to turn the power off because there's no power now we just cut it off it was flowing through the meter but it's a good idea
to uh, measure it. And if there's other components in the circuit, if they have a path uh, through the meter that's different from the uh, resistor, you'll get a lower resistance. But yeah, it's a little bit more than 10 mega ohms and more than its 1% tolerance claim, but these are cheap uh, resistors, so that's kind of to be expected. But in any case, the main takeaway is with uh, current, especially if you're using resistors with tens values, so this is 10, 100, so 10 times 10, and then 1,000, 10 times 10, 10, 10, and so on. Once you get a feel for these values, the current that you'll get from a particular uh, uh, voltage, then it's easy to uh, just multiply that. So with the uh, 100 ohm resistor, we had a 50 milliamps of current going through it. If we double the resistance to 200 ohms of resistance, then we would have 25 milliamps of current flowing. And so it's pretty easy once you have these base numbers down to uh, estimate what you're going to need. So now, also, this is more than a quarter watt of power across the uh, 10 ohm resistor. We have 5 volts times 0.5 uh, amps of current, which gives us 2.5 watts of power. This has to dissipate a lot more than the quarter watt that these are rated for, the 0.25, so 10 times the uh, current. And uh, that makes sense. It's one-tenth the resistance of this one. It'll have 10 times the current going through it. It provides 10, it produces 10 times the heat, but this is made to dissipate it that much, whereas this one is not. And so, once you get a feel for these adjustments, you know, uh, it makes future circuits a whole lot easier to understand because you'll often get, how did you pick what resistor to use? Well, first off, it has to be able to handle the power. So, I would not use a quarter watt resistor where the uh, 10 watt resistor would be needed in this case. So, I would not use a 10 ohm resistor in a quarter as a quarter watt. And uh, if it's going to be passing this much uh, power with this much voltage, I need a 10 watt resistor. I can't use, or at least above a 2.5 watt resistor, I can't use a quarter watt resistor. So that's one decision. Is the resistor going to get too hot? Now, we know 100 ohms is the uh, limit, so we go higher, we know it's even safer. The higher we go, the safer it is. So once we have that uh, quarter watt limit, then we just pick a higher value resistor and it will be fine. That's pretty easy. Same with current, like the LED. We commonly light the LED. It is recommended to keep it below 20 milliamps of current. Once you know what value resistor keeps that current below uh, 20 milliamps, you learn that when you study uh, LEDs, then any higher value resistor will just limit current even more and make it even uh, safer for the LED. The LED will last longer the less current you put through it. So you really want to put enough current to make it bright enough but not more than you need because the more current you put through it the more it shortens its life but 20 milliamps should be fine so in any case hopefully that all made sense this is uh, important to know to understand uh, other circuits because usually when you learn about new components and stuff they assume you already know this and so it probably won't be explained the uh, current and the resistance and the voltage the ohms law generally they assume you know ohms law after you studied resistors. So hopefully that all makes sense. Hope you enjoyed the video. It ran kind of long. and uh, But I'm glad you stuck around this long. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.